and gentlemen, welcome to Hero Movie Podcast, your greatest source for superhero movie discussion in the multiverse. I am your host, Adam Portress, and I'm joined by Sean Kovacs. Hey, Kurt Russell, congratulations. Captain Ron is no longer the most embarrassing thing you've worked on. <laughs> and of course, Bruce Leslie. I'm a prickly pear in the city of brotherly love. Oh, that is right, everybody. Bruce Leslie's going to sound a little bit different this week, and it's because he is on location there. Let me ask you this. How is the cream cheese? Is it as good as everyone says? Is it the same here as it is there? Eh. <laughs> a ringing endorsement for the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> Yes, it's uh, the hometown of Sylvester Stallone, man. I got to make the most of it. Indeed, you do. And uh, we have to make the most of everything that we get from our supporters over at patreon.com slash HMP. They help keep this show running. Uh, and uh, we really appreciate all of those guys. And when you do, you get to do a couple of votes and things like that. And this month, as we do every single month, uh, our patron supporters, no matter what the level, are able to vote on a movie that we watch. And this week, they have voted that we shall watch Sky High, and that'll be our review this week. We're going to, you know, do what we normally do on this show, talk about how it relates back to comic books, uh, you know, related to Sylvester Stallone, the whole nine yards. And if you'd like to be like one of those people that votes on these or gets the pre-show, post-show, as well as the Dinger Zone, head on over to patreon.com slash HMP and join the fun today. You can even be like, uh, if you're so inclined, uh, be like our friend uh, Jeremy, who actually uh, upped his pledge from uh, one buck to five. So uh, good on you, Jeremy. Jeremy. So uh, again, like whether... It. What a, whatever level that you're able to support at and help the show out, you know, like like I say, and Sean loves value for value. If you get something out of this, give something <laughs> back. Help keep the pirate chef floating, everybody. Uh, but let's get into some stuff, boys, because like I said, the patrons have said this is what we want you to review, and and, and when they say jump, we say how high. Uh, so in in that in that vein, here's the trailer for Sky High. I didn't write that at all. Will, I just want you to know how proud I am that you'll be attending my alma mater. From the moment Will Stronghold started high school, he knew he was in for the ride of his life. Here we go! Welcome to Sky High. You are the descendants Ow. of the world's most legendary superheroes. All he wants is to live up to his family name. My parents are the greatest superheroes on the planet. But he's not sure he's got what it takes. Step up here and show me your power. Yeah. Car. Hero. If you don't make hero, you're just a sidekick. Car. Are you insane? Sidekick. Now, all I ever wanted for him was to save the world. To transform himself. We can't change who he is. Not without dropping him in a vat of toxic waste. Where will we even find a vat of toxic waste? Steve! He'll have to test his limits. You have three minutes to immobilize your opponents and save the citizens. Uh, remember when we used to use real citizens? Yes. Uh... <laughs> and unleash the hero within. He's strong. We're strong? He's super strong. From Walt Disney Pictures, Woo! discovering his powers was just the beginning. Great. Because the heroes of tomorrow. Hey, you wanna dance? No. Me neither. We'll have to save the world today. My old enemy. I always swore he'd have his revenge on me. Put my dad down. The sky is the limit. Yeah, my boy! Sky high. My boy has super strength. Come here. Ow! Sorry. Ow! You are strong! All right, everybody, that was the trailer for Ooh, Sky High. That was the trailer this movie deserved, too. Yes, it was. <laughs> In Here's, a world 
Here's the IMDb plotline. As we know, IMDb always 100% correct in everything they say and or do. Set in an era where superheroes are commonly known and accepted, young William Stronghold, the son of Commander and Jetstream, tries to balance between being a normal teenager and an extraordinary being. Uh, this is directed by Mike Mitchell, who actually happens to have a movie out in theaters right now, little one you might have heard of, called The Lego Movie. Uh, this star, or like a movie too, rather, excuse me. Uh, starring uh, Kurt Russell, Kelly Preston, Michael uh, Engenaro, uh, D- Danielle Panabaker, Bruce Campbell, uh, and a crap load of other people. There, we'll, we'll get to them. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, that's a big one, of course. Uh, let's do it. Uh, this isn't based on any particular comic book that we know of, but we just have to ask ourselves, you know. It's time for Bruce's comic book connection. Bruce, what, what do you have for the comic book connection this week? Well, Sky High isn't a direct adaptation of an existing comic book property, but there's no shortage of tropes to draw upon. The concept of a school to train superheroes is certainly nothing new, and having the students face peril from within before they have completed their formal training is certainly a well-trod path. Uh, Xavier's School for Gifted Individuals is probably the most well-known such academy. Uh, Kitty Pride could once be seen pouting in the hallways, wondering when she could go on missions with the big folks. Avengers Academy was another school for superheroes at Marvel, and DC had Young Justice, which one could say was a school of sorts. My personal favorite example of a superhero school doesn't come from comics. Instead, it comes from an honest-to-goodness book. Superpowers, written by indie author Drew Hayes, is a story of college kids enrolled in a top-secret hero certification program at a fictional university in California. It is a series of four books, one for each year of uni, and a big shocker here, guys, but each year they have to face a major attack on their school. Of course, it is always something they're not ready for, but strangely seems to be vulnerable to life lessons they've learned along the way. Honestly, it's kind of crazy that the big attacks always come at the end of the academic year. Maybe they ought to move finals up a week, save themselves a little trouble, you know? Uh, But an element that makes superpowers a bit different than typical superhero fare is that there are supers and there are powers. Supers have good control over their powers, but powers don't. However, the protagonists of the series are a group of powers who underwent a uh, secret procedure to make them supers. Now, how's that for cooking up some excitement? <laughs> I don't think the students get turned into babies in any of the books, but there are traitors in their midst. Uh, the former powers hoping to be heroes are Vince, a guy who can absorb energy, then redirect it. Nick, a guy with luck powers who was raised in a casino and has ties to organized crime in Las Vegas. <laughs> Alice, she's a rich girl who can fly. Herschel and Roy are kind of a Jekyll and Hyde situation. Herschel likes Dungeons and Dragons, but Roy likes line dancing. Mary is a powerful telepath and telekinetic. They all have pretty tropey powers, but they try. Unlike Sky High, which gave us uh, Puddle Lad and Guinea Pig Girl, Glow Boy for heaven's sake, even the Mystery Men had more going for them than these losers do. But just like the guy who sells me scratch-off lottery tickets says, they can't all be winners, kid. Well, so the year is uh, 2005. And not that long ago. No, not not too awful long ago, but certainly not in the superhero renaissance that we are today. And, you know, when you can't have a power pack movie, you might as well have Sky High, right? It's kind of <laughs> sort of maybe. And uh, <laughs> is it fair to assume that they made this movie before they had the rights to Marvel? Was Feige attached to this in any way? <laughs> not to my recollection. I, I remember no, looking he was at not, the, had nothing to do with it. I remember looking at the credits, and I think that name would have popped out pretty hardcore. <laughs> Now, the producer on this was a guy named Andrew Gunn. Is he related to uh, James Gunn at all? Do you know? I do not know. I'm going to take a guess. Because I know like, all of his siblings are pretty successful by, in uh, entertainment. By looking at the guy, I'm going to say no. Okay. He just doesn't look like he... Like, James Gunn, and you and you see... Uh, what's his brother's name? Sean? Sean. Sean Sean's Gunn. the one that I know best. Uh, like, they... They look like they could be brothers. This guy is, he don't belong in that family. I, <laughs> Even spelled with two N's, right? Yeah. Oh, he's Canadian. Never he's, mind. A, he's a big dude. He actually, he looks like he's a bit of a bro, if I'm going to be completely honest. 
That oh, makes sense. So, hmm. Apparently, he was the producer on Bad Santa 2. Oh, the good Bad Santa. I, I don't like those movies. <laughs> so did you guys, did, have you guys seen this movie before this week? Yes. I have not, but I thought I had. Like, I think this kind of got mixed up in my head. Like, when, when Adam first mentioned we were going to be watching this, I was thinking, oh, okay, cool, Robert Rodriguez for two weeks in a row. Like, I'm thinking <laughs> Spy Kids, Shark Boy, and Lava Girl. I thought this was all part of that whole thing that uh, Rodriguez does. And then, boy, I was sadly disappointed when I found out it wasn't. I'll tell you this. If you, like, you know, not, not jumping the gun too much, but, like, if, if you weren't crazy about this, you will absolutely loathe Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I have seen Shark Boy and Lava Girl multiple times. Really? Not by choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, but sh- I had some kids that really got into Shark Boy and Lava Girl for a brief period. So do you seen it in the past, Sean, or is this kind of first for you as well? I had not, and very much like Bruce, I had mistaken it for something else. Oh. I thought we were seeing that Tim Allen movie that he made just after he had made Space Quest, where it was kind of the same premise, but with superheroes instead of with with, with Star Trek. I wasn't aware. Oh, of- so it's I'm Zoom? so glad that you said that, Sean, because I was really wondering, like, I, th- I thought this was sort of a... Uh, I don't know what was a deep impact Armageddon kind of thing. Like I seem to feel like there were dueling high school superhero training movies out at one point and, hmm. and I never saw either of them. So there were two of these then. Yes. Yeah. Cause the other one's called zoom. I don't know how, I, I don't think they came out the same year, but they were close. Yeah. I, I, I could not have recalled the name of zoom, but I did have a feeling like I felt there were yeah, the sort next of year, 2006 like that. Mm. What was it? 2006. So, yeah. It was the following year. That I did not see. But boy, I, I, I really thought that that's what this was. And then when I saw that Kurt Russell was in it, I was like, oh, sweet. Kurt Russell, this is going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have Ego the Living Planet here. But, man, I, I was wrong about that. Surprisingly little Kurt Russell in the movie, too. I mean, all Well, I, I would imagine that, you know, he's probably on for a week, and that was it. Yeah. yeah. Kelly Preston, you know, as as uh, the mom, kind of a I don't know, I felt like they maybe outcast for that role. I, I was I, trying to, had, I was I was trying to remember have, have have can you think of anything you've ever seen her in where you were like, "Wow, she was really great in that." Um there was some weird movie I used to watch on HBO that her and John Travolta made. She was pretty good in it, but I can't remember the name of the movie. I'm looking through the the uh, the filmography here, and there's nothing that's like there seems to be a lot of really not so hot choices here. Everything she had from, a small part in Jerry Maguire. Everything from like you know Jack Frost to Holy Man to you know uh, a View from the Top, <laughs> What a Girl Wants, The Cat in the Hat. She's she's been in a lot of really awful crap. Yeah. Wow, it's like she has way more name recognition than she should. Old dogs. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Well, she it's because she was a kid actor. I mean, that's really where that's really where she came from. You know, like she I, I can remember hearing that she was on like Quincy and stuff like that. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, The Experts was the name of that movie I watched on HBO that wasn't half bad. Oh man, I'm I'm going through her I'm going through her bio her uh, bio now. Like, it's pretty much she was just in, a bunch of junk. <laughs> the big the big thing was that she was in Space Camp. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was a big movie when I was a kid. Like, uh, yeah. like really big movie when I was a kid. I had a friend who lived in Huntsville where they actually do Space Camp, so we got a kick. Man, I always wanted to go to Space Camp as a kid, but you know, poor. <laughs> Me too. You're just I've like, oh my god, this has got to be amazing. Center as an adult, <laughs> boring. Yeah, not so much to see. Not so. It would have been disappointing, I think, if you'd win as a kid. Better I, just to watch the movie. I, I, or I say, uh, you know, uh, go down to uh, Kennedy there in Florida. That's like that's that's a good time. That's what I oh, did. That was awesome. Yeah, that's 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 some real fun stuff right there. Go do yeah. that. So that, was that super fun. That don't cost you much or nothing. Oh. I've never been. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. It's very did you, cool. Did you know that there are five distinct movies called Sky High? Really? I did see that. And, <laughs> and one of them, 
one of them is like uh, the, the, one of these things is not like the other <laughs> when it comes to that movie. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I, I mean, I, did they? I mean, were they really so in love with that title? I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say that that's the perfect title. They probably could have called it something else to not have five other movies, <laughs> one of which was released in 2003 uh, based on a Japanese manga. Yeah, but nobody saw that. Not in this country. <laughs> but it's just weird that that of all, you know, it's not a great name. And when you see there are four other movies with that name, how about you just come up with a new one, Disney? All right. So I am going to take something here and uh, go with it because it appears to be uh, the case. I, I like this movie. I liked it when I saw it back in the early 2000s. I, I liked it now. I like. I look. Look. Here's the thing. Is this as good as the normal fare that we do on this show? Not particularly, but this is a PG-rated Disney fare, right? Sure. And it's meant, let's be honest, for children. And I think what it does, it does pretty darn well. And I I don't know, like everything from the basic... uh, I guess, I don't want to say moral lessons that we learn from it per se, but there is like a slight lesson to to all of these things, as, as uh, you know, many children's products are often want to do. And it, it works out. Like, it's not, it's not overly violent. It's not overly sexualized. You could show this to any, you know, any kid, because there's a lot of stuff that we watch that certainly I, I would not put, uh, don't sit your eight-year-old in front to watch Luke Cage, you know? It's going to be a little bit violent for them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. I know exactly what you mean. But this this doesn't feel like a Disney movie to me though. So what would It's that weird it's that weird like touchstone but not touchstone type That's of Disney true. movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. It just it feels like boy, it feels like a whole lot of direct to Redbox when I'm watching this. But but something about it, I don't know, the effects weren't bad. You know, per se, and I like I like the stuff where, like, when you first start with when the movie first starts, and mom and dad have to go attack, have to go save the day from that robot. Like, I liked all that. I love the robot. Yes, that stuff was that stuff was a ton of fun. But the the problem with this movie to me isn't isn't the the effects. The problem with me is the casting choices in this movie. Because, you know, the I, I said this off air, the kid who's the main character in this movie is nothingness. He is he's clearly I mean, he's clearly a Disney Channel kid because he he makes all the right face moves when uh, I'm sad now. I'm happy now. I'm excited. Yes. Like he does all of those things, but he's not really acting. You know, oh, that's that's what this feels like to me. This feels like there's a show called um, Henry Danger that my kids watch on like the Disney channel, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like goofy superhero with his sidekick or whatever. And, uh, the production quality on this, instead of feeling like a Disney movie, this feels like Henry danger. This feels like it should be a TV show. Now, when, when you said that this guy was like from a a Disney TV kid or whatever, that's when it kind of clicked with me that that's what I'm feeling when I'm watching this is not, like made for theatrical release, but like a two hour special presentation on Disney XD. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's exactly, that's exactly how I feel about it too. It does feel like that. My, it, my, my, my biggest, my biggest problem with this movie though, isn't even the actors. My, my biggest problem is our main character does nothing wrong ever. Yes. <laughs> that that can be a problem here. The only thing he does wrong is he gets his powers con- at a convenient time, but not as early as everybody else. Right. Even when he gets in trouble with his friends, it's not through any fault of his own. It's it's because the it's because uh the best actor in this movie sets him up for the kill. And also, uh I will say there were some moments of joy you mentioned that robot that they fight at the beginning but i don't know i also was made very very happy when i'm watching kelly preston flying through the air and she's like holding kurt russell under his armpits or whatever because he can't fly that is pretty funny his human his human backpack basically that part was pretty good i did like that pretty cool daniel panabaker is a teenager 
Like, I think of her so much from uh, The Flash now that it was kind of had to do a double take. I bring a lot of goodwill towards her because I like her character from The Flash. Yeah, she's fine. She's fine in this. Does does you know? I, I, again, the whole thing is very paint by numbers, and sometimes I, I don't know. For me, sometimes I, you want to see a paint by numbers kind of thing, but like it, it does exactly what she's supposed to do. She's she's she's. I don't want to say she's great, but she's good. Yeah, and she's she, I thought she was pretty a, good in this. She's got kind of a poison ivy power. You know, she can control plants or floronic man. Maybe really more felt like we ivy. could have explored that a little bit more. I'll be honest. I I feel like they. <laughs> For a guy who likes superheroes and comic books, to make a superhero movie where you don't put that much effort into the powers, you're just kind of like randomly giving it to them and leaving them alone and, and not exploring this the way that they should. I was a little irked at how they dealt with the powers, almost like they couldn't be bothered to make their superheroes into superheroes. I'm with you. There's almost like there was no thought put into it. I know she'll just turn into a guinea pig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know what I also like in that, too? I also like in this, like, this is very specific X-Men kind of, uh, at, uh, you know, time timeline here. But you remember when, like, Doctor Doom got everybody, like, down in Genosha where they, like, had, like, all these schools for, like, reject mutants? This happened somewhere yeah. in, like, the early 2000s-ish, somewhere right, right around this time, actually. Uh, I feel where, like that might have even been a Grant Morrison story. It was. It, it was Grant Morrison. It was absolutely Grant Morrison. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So like all the like kind of reject mutants that where they're just like, uh, what's what's your power? I look like a pterodactyl. It's like, yeah. okay, what else? <laughs> no, no, just that. I just look weird and funky, and there's nothing that they can do with me. And like, I think that whole island got nuked or something. I don't remember what happened. You know, she I think was that's not where good. Negasonic Teenage Warhead came from. I wouldn't be utterly surprised. But uh, yeah, but at least at least she has a power. Like there were literally kids there were just like they just looked funny, and they're just like, well, we can't keep you in society with regular people. <laughs> so send them to Genosha. You'll be fine. There was the kid that turned into a puddle. I, get, you're, I, th I think you're right. Now, this is the biggest thing that I'm looking back on now that you really think, say for, you know, the gerbil had a use. It was a real crumb use, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but, like, Puddle Guy, we didn't use his powers to too much things. And, and honestly. What are you talking about? He tripped up the fast guy. Well, okay. <laughs> One thing. Oh, and by it's the way, like real uh, super I do cool. give him thumbs up. Thumbs up for a chubby speedster. I always love chubby speedsters. That's you true. Love the fat guy who can run. <laughs> and he was zooming all over the place. Now, uh, the bus driver at the beginning. Yes. Was this his big break? Like, did no? Is this where Broken Lizard discovered him? No. <laughs> like I imagine they're all sitting around saying, "Hey, guys, movie night. Let's watch uh, uh, Sky High again." <laughs> and then they found their Farva. <laughs> no, Kevin Heffernan came from Broken Lizard, but they they that movie came out the big one, the Super Troopers movie that came out in two thousand one. Oh, this, this came out in two thousand five. You know, he he had had a couple. I think even Club Dread. Yep, Club out Dread was out in two thousand four. Mm -hmm. Kind of a weird choice then, if he's already been Farva. I don't know if you know. Once you've seen a guy's junk on screen, I don't know that I want him driving a school bus. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm I'm very surprised that he didn't play the loudest fat guy for you know the next twenty years because that never really happened for him, did it? But he, no, it he, didn't. He's perfect for that. He was uh, set up to be New England's own John Candy, and it never happened. I know it. I I've never really seen any of those movies because like I I had a bad experience in the early days of pre -down of downloading movies and stuff like that back when it was you know high speed was still pretty darn slow and everything. I waited forever for this De Niro flick to download that wasn't coming to town. And then that's how I justified it. I'm like, look, it's not coming to town. I'm going to go ahead and try to download it. And I downloaded it, ended up being Super Troopers. I've never liked the movie since because I was just like, this, <laughs> I'm like, this isn't what I wanted. I wanted this serious De Niro flick. I don't even remember what movie it was. I just know De Niro was in it. And I was just like, I was just so mad. I'm like, what is this? This is, this is. This is not what I wanted. How, the internet stood me wrong when I was trying to illegally download movies. Can you believe what it? What about Dave Foley? Was this his big break? No. <laughs> That's funny. I'm sorry. Dave Foley and Kevin McDonald are great in this. They're just they they're absolutely so stupid, but it's so great. They're so good I, in this. I feel like Dave 
this is just right for Dave Foley. Like he's one of those guys. Yeah, I kind of like him, but he's never he's never got me to watch something just because oh, I had to see Dave Foley in it. You know what? Like you know what I like about like this movie specifically, and like in this Dave Foley, as opposed to like say news radio Dave Foley. This uh, yeah. Dave Foley, you can tell that ex wife has screwed him over by this point. <laughs> yes, and that he is just like. I have to do this because she screwed me out of so much money. If you don't know, like his <laughs> ex-wife took him for a lot of bread, and Dave Foley a has like no, no money. money anymore. And so you could just tell that, like in his eyes, he's just like, "I'm gonna do this the best I can," but God, I don't like myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he never really had a well he could go back to to make easy money either. You know, I mean, Dave Foley's always like, uh, you, you know who he is, you recognize him, but. You know, what was he, Strangers with Candy or Kids in the Hall? Kids I can in the Hall. Confused. Kids in the Hall. Yeah. I don't know if anybody screaming for a reunion on that. I wouldn't uh, mind. Everybody. I would not <laughs> mind. I, I want all those guys back and doing something. That would be great. I'd love that. And they keep making, like, like I know that they made Hell Comes to Town a couple years ago, which I still haven't seen. Good job, CBC. But they, but I, I uh, uh, I've heard nothing but great things about it, which, I, because Brain Candy really did. We really was not good, and, and I think uh, brain candy is why I get get I call them strangers with candy sometimes because there's sure. that other show on Comedy Central. Sure, yeah. that's easy enough to get, you know, and they're right about about around the same time, so that's yeah. understandable. Yeah, but yeah, uh, can we all very funny strangers with candy? Not so much. Yeah, and and so for this movie, can we can we because we're kind of beating around the bush with this thing. This movie is Harry Potter. Like the the people who wrote this movie said, "Hey, Harry Potter is is really successful. Let's make the same thing, but with with superheroes." I yeah, mean, an American Harry Potter. Is. You know, leave the wizards for the uh, Brits and give us our good old American superheroes for Sky High. Hey, which fine with that. <laughs> even with the even with the bus ride, you know, I mean, that was a very Harry Potterish bus very ride much. kind of thing because the movies always start with the weird trip to Hogwarts or whatever. But and he's the most famous kid in school, even though he's never been there before. And you know where they messed up. You know where they messed up here. They didn't make the kid an orphan. It's true. If you had been an orphan, this thing we'd be nine movies deep in the Sky High multiverse. Well, that's that's, how, that's how you like. That's how you avoid a lawsuit is you make his parents alive. <laughs> We'd be watching Nine High, <laughs> <laughs> Sky Nine. We've seen oh, them man. grow up so much, isn't it nice? <laughs> oh my goodness! But uh, yeah, but I think it's fair to say this lacks some of the magic that Harry Potter had. Uh, yeah, there, there is, there is a secret weapon in this movie, and that's Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who I don't think I've ever seen her be bad in anything. Did you notice that when she put her helmet on, it was like Patrick Warburton's voice? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of two strange, like, <laughs> just the combination of what's well, her name? I think Mary that they were trying to step. throw you. Like, you, you know, yeah. like, you hear Patrick Warburton's voice, so why would it be a lady? <laughs> hey, but, Patrick, uh, could you come in for, like, literally, uh, you know, 10 minutes record a couple of lines we'll pay one yeah that sounds great i'll do that yeah i'll go down <laughs> and I, I think it really lost me i think it really lost me when the big evil doomsday weapon simply turned people into babies i wish that the movie started where everybody is babies <laughs> <laughs> super babies is that a whole franchise they were trying to rip off maybe you're talking about baby geniuses and they made a bunch of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Yeah. I thought one of them was Baby Genius's Super Babies. They got superpowers. They do, and you are right. And yes, <laughs> they did that. Yes, and yes, also, Virginia. The world is a horrible place. <laughs> and John is in it. He's in that too. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about Dave Foley? Is Dave Foley in in Baby Super Genius's. Babies? Yeah, in, in, in Baby Geniuses colon Super Babies. Yes, I have no idea. <laughs> he should be. Well, and and first of all, I I hate the implication that you think that I'm the expert when it comes to Baby <laughs> Genius. I don't know. You that just, is upsetting. You have just pulled off a lot of really intense Baby Genius knowledge, un unscripted. <laughs> well, what you're <laughs> what you're forgetting is that very close, very close to my heart are terrible sequels. You guys are forgetting that. It's yeah. so. 
And so when I learned when I learned that there was like a whole baby genius franchise, I was like, what? <laughs> Where did this come into play? I mean, even last week I was like, there's more than one Beastmaster? Where what? <laughs> so are we gonna throw up baby geniuses super babies on the old uh, Patreon to vote on next month? Yes. Yes, that's right. It's right here right now. We'll only need two more two more things. <laughs> super to buddies. For. Super bu- Oh, come on now. I would totally do. I would totally All right. Watch. Okay, Super Buddies. What was the one we just said that I totally forgot because I'm stupid? Baby Geniuses colon Super Babies. Okay. And w- one more cuz we're all, we're going to put in surrogates cuz I want that to actually be our continuing joke on this show. <laughs> and of course, as always, surrogates. <laughs> <laughs> and no one will ever vote for it. It'll be the perennial all-star that just sits there at the bottom rung of that ladder, just hanging out going, It's the hey Susan guys. Lucci of Precisely. <laughs> we'll come up with another one in the next month. <laughs> Good deal. I'm coughing here. <laughs> Linda Carter showed up. You know, they're, they're trying. They, they make the weirdest little bits of effort sometimes in this movie. Like, they seem to not take what they're doing seriously. They seem to not care about... Uh, the superheroing business, and then they go and throw Linda Carter in there as like a uh, an Easter egg of sorts to the folks who like good superhero TV shows and movies like Wonder Woman. And, and they, she even says it's not like I'm Wonder Woman, hey, which sounded, if over. I'm not mistaken, was a complete ADR line. Oh, without a doubt. They're just like, should we mention that she's Wonder Woman at any point? Yeah. Oh my gosh, get her back in here. We need to do a little additional dialogue. And at some point, I expected her to, like, spin around and get, you know, as close to a Wonder Woman costume as you can get without being sued sort of thing. But I don't think that ever happened. Like uh, yeah, Miss I did, America? I, 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 it, it, it's got to be on the cutting room floor somewhere. Like, I really thought she was going to be the, the butt kicker at the end that really was fighting against the bad guys. But that yeah, just didn't me happen. Too. She looks great. She looks great in this movie. Oh, yeah. she She's uh, looked great in Supergirl last season. She's held up well. Yes, she has. Well, you know who else has held up well? One Bruce Campbell. Because let me tell you, <laughs> if there's anybody that could ever play a gym teacher, Bruce Campbell's got to be that. Like that's a top lister right there. That's good. <laughs> Bruce Campbell he, is just a mean old uh, gym teacher. I love it. He it made his way big. into all the uh, Raimi Spider-Man movies. Now he's got this. I mean, the guy's a, a regular superhero. Uh, a number one kind of casting person now, and I I loved I loved all the tryouts and stuff where it's just like well or or just it's not even tryouts it's like uh, show us your powers and we get up to, because that's how also school is if you remember back in the day God knows they sure don't do it now I'm sure because it would just be too detrimental to children but remember when they would have you do crap in front of like you know the entire you know rest of the oh, students yeah, in the class and stuff we had we had to climb rope yeah all that junk where they're just like hey how many pull ups can you do in front of the entire class. Uh, how many is none? Can I do none? I'd like to do oh, none. Oh boy, I was I was the first uh, batch for Ronald Reagan's presidential fitness thing. You remember that, Sean? Uh, I sure do. Oh boy, I didn't like that. Hey, it, listen, I caught the tail end of that in elementary school. <laughs> so, I had pneumonia. Do, right? They wanted me to run six miles or something. Yeah, him and Schwarzenegger just got all kind of crazy and just decided like, hey, everybody's going to be great. No, stop it. I don't need all this. But it's but you know Bruce Campbell doing what Bruce Campbell does that's great but I, I love how you know they get the kids up throw stuff at them we get to, it's a little bit of storytelling like you know easy kind of like hey let's explore all the powers and stuff uh, you know is it the most compelling thing in the world not really but is it an effective way to tell a story to you know let's face it mostly kids that are watching this I think so yes. it, it it really makes me want to ask a question of the people that inhabit this world where sky high exists just because somebody has let's say the ability to turn into a beach ball or a guinea pig or let's say glow mildly ever so mildly. you have to ship them off to the superhero school right i mean there's they, they need people in circus sideshows too right yeah, yeah, exactly. Because hey, we got rid of elephants. We need freaks now <laughs> to get them on board. But you're right. Like they do, just kind of send everybody up there. Just uh, like if anything, this is the most privileged group of kids you could ever possibly imagine. Because they've just they've had it handed to them. It's just like, oh, well, just because you were born of these people, you're going straight to the top. It's there is the scary aspect of Brad Bird's exceptionalism in this movie for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> and you know, it's ba- I mean, it's basically the same bloody premise as as incredible. Oh yeah, you but, take Incredibles and Harry Potter and slap them together, put a superhero yeah. skin on it. It is this movie. You're not wrong. But there, I mean, there is there is that weird thing in this movie too, where <laughs> you, look, there are certain people who are just born better than other people. And thank God this school exists to to root them <laughs> to, out. To separate them and put them in their proper classes where they belong. <laughs> exactly. Way in the heavens. Exactly. <laughs> and and they were missing like a good solid vigilante type. Like like they need one Batman type. You know, somebody without powers, but they're just tough as nails. Well, I, I think that's what the uh the, the what's his uh nose Yeah, character. the flame kid. Yeah, but he had flames. War and peace, by the way. War and peace. Right, uh, first of all, I love that corniness, but like Great that kind name. of stupid stuff. Great I love name. it because that is so like you know golden age crap. That is yeah. that is uh, uh, that is some some really good name drop there. Like uh, it, you know what it reminds me of is oh my god I can't remember the name of the book. Um, Invincible. It reminds yes. me of all the names in of yes. that, that they have in Invincible, like multi, multiple and yeah, wrestling. and also uh, when the movie started with Kurt Russell and uh, and uh, the son and the son not really exhibiting his powers yet, I wondered if I was going to get an Invincible vibe from this movie, but they went away from that pretty quick. That also would have made this movie better. It would have. You know the the phone number that they use in uh, on the stronghold realty sign. Yeah, it's on the bench. Uh, that is that was an actual number at ABC, <laughs> <laughs> and they would and if you called the number, it would say thank you for calling ABC. The number you have reached is a fictional, non-working number used for motion pictures and television. <laughs> I love <laughs> Listen, I love that. Give it. Give us something other than the five 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 zero one zero one. You know, without a doubt, they should totally do that. M- more companies need. But to But at do the that same time, sure. too, like another like nice smart move that enough places don't do because it's just like it, because they're stupid because it's so simple. Is when you know old bus driver what's his nose there is giving out his card. Finger is over the number. Why? Why yeah. don't we do this more often? Where it's just like, don't show us the number. Like, it, it, give us. A, you know, I just, it's, it's infuriating. Hey, KL five, KL five works for me. No, th- see, those are fun too. That that makes you also go, what year is this supposed to take place? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the beave around the corner? What's going on? KL five. Uh, but yeah, I th- I think you're right though, Sean. Like uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is really great in this, and she is you know being the you know feature villain and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I, but the, but you're right again. I I can't think of anything that I've seen her in that she's been bad, and she's actually been really great in pretty much everything. Like like truly truly good, and even in things that don't you know that that don't warrant it. Like the Die you know, Hard, Die Hard Four is it three four four? What what are you talking about? Live for your Die Hard. Live free of that. Well, those movies are awful, and she's in both of them. Yeah, she's. Oh, she in both of them. I, I, that she's in one. both of the really, really bad ones. That last, that last one, last one. Like I, I threw that one out of my mind. That hey, was two words, Jai Courtney. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's out I of was, my mind. I was laughing hysterically in the movie theater oh. watching <laughs> that movie. That's how bad it was. She was. But I mean, you know, she's in. She's in really great things like The Spectacular Now. And and then and then she'll do stuff like Abe Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, and you know I'm probably going to get killed online for this, but I really liked the the remake. Of, well, not the remake, but like the prequel to the thing. I thought that that was great, and I, and I liked I her see. in it. I didn't see that. It's pretty good, and she's the lead in it, hmm. and. Huh. Yeah, it's it's pretty and and actually I think I just gave it away because you're not supposed to know it's a prequel to the end. Well, I, well at least you didn't say the name of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, no, she, Ten Cloverfield Lane, Scott Pilgrim, like she's great in a lot of stuff and a lot and and like rangy, you know, she's got a lot of stuff she does. Yeah, she sure does. But uh, yeah. And I thought the design on the on her costume and everything was actually really good. Some of the costumes and stuff, and like, oh, I, I love the early two thousands wear. It's so it's so deliciously good. <laughs> just everybody just looks like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Daniel Panabaker was wearing a skirt over top of blue jeans. Was that a thing people did? Because that's oh a, yeah. There, the, there's oh, a lot yeah. of there was a lot of really big mistakes. Like I'd say. 
I well, I don't know. I guess every era's got their their kind of deal, but like late nineties, early two thousands, there was a lot of really bad stuff going on. It was just like as far as like people's <laughs> fashion wear, it's that's not good. <laughs> but you can say there's a lot of the there's a lot of really bad '80s stuff. There's a lot of bad early '90s stuff. So you know, I guess it goes in. Uh, in this waves. is Tana Baker's first movie, also. Really, like Sky High is. Her first, I mean, she had done TV shows, some TV, but this is her first movie. Yeah, I think I looked it up. She was like uh, 17, 18 when she made this. No, hard to well, believe that. Well, hard to believe that she's the same age as that kid who plays number five. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because that kid is amazing. <laughs> We'll get to that next week. Indeed. Wow, I thought that kid was younger than that. Nope. Well, well, that explains his acting prowess. So, no, mm-hmm. she was. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out the thing here. While well, while you're doing that, I'm going to vamp because so she's Jim, like two years old. Jim Rash is also in this movie. Oh, Jim I Rash to is also that. one of those. He's one of those guys who is great in everything he does. Do you know he's from Charlotte? I do know that. I didn't know that until I was researching this movie because you know. Uh, oh, six months, seven months ago, I went on my community binge and watched all the community and big fan of Gay Dean. And when I saw him pop up here, I was excited about that. Then I saw that uh, he was from Charlotte. So it was just kind of like full circle. Oh, you, you mean uh, Oscar? Academy winner? Award winning mm-hmm. Jim Rash. Yeah. <laughs> he won an Academy Award? He did indeed. He did for writing. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. What did he write? Adapted screenplay of The Descendants? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yep. uh, what you all. Oh, I, I did see not his, see that coming. I can see his face, but I can't uh, think of his flipping name. The director, Alexander Payne, is an Alexander Payne flick. It's it's, it's I pretty did not decent. See him writing the Descendants. Also, George Clooney's in it. Uh, really decent uh, Matthew Lillard performance in that film. Believe it or not. Are you sure you don't mean the Descent? No, that's a very diff- <laughs> that's a very yeah. different movie. <laughs> yeah, very very huge. different. Now, I like I like uh, uh, Michael McDonald's character. First of all, you always have that like weird, crazy, brainy guy. But it looks just like the uh, I, I Kevin forget, McDonald. Uh, Kevin McDonald, excuse me. Uh, Michael McDonald is very different. That'd be a very yeah, different movie. I was going with it. I'm a fan <laughs> of his music. <laughs> uh, but uh, it looks like that that character from Star Trek, like the first, like I think like in first season of Star Trek or whatever, the guys that all do the telepathy and whatnot. Looks a lot like that, which I don't know. I was a fan of. Yeah, the big head. Oh, big he's head. great, and I especially love when he. You guys probably said this, but the, when he's the baby and his face is on the baby, it's pretty. <laughs> <great>. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. And you, 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 you have a, you have a big, <laughs> you have a big affinity for uh, human, uh, big adult faces on tiny babies. I know that of you as well. <laughs> You're a big fan of those for some weird reason, but I love you that you right. love it. You are right. <laughs> have you like, seen the house with the clock in its walls? I have not. You should. It's good. Oh, really? Jack Black's head on a baby body. It's good. Spoiler. Oh, no. That whole movie is, like, honestly, it's it's uh, it's it's really, it's a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's good. Uh, you know, you've never thought, uh, wow, I really relate to this chair. <laughs> that's what happens in that movie. <laughs> You don't know me. Maybe I do that all the time. <laughs> Not this chair. This is a special chair. I guess. Uh, I guess it was interesting that. Um, oh, what was her? The I can't even remember. I don't care enough to remember the villain's name. Destructo. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Lady Pain. No. Oh. Uh. Uh. But you're close. It's. Uh. Oh my God. Uh. uh Royal Pain. Royal, Royal pain. That's it. I do like the idea that she turned herself into a baby and had to like just age up until she could get revenge. Man, how great is I that? I thought that, that was so cool. That I is so that horrifying. Was a, that was more cool than what this movie deserved. For sure. And I love and, the line of like, I have to go through puberty twice for this. And that's, <laughs> and, and, and by the way, that's a way better movie. <laughs> that is a yes, way it better is. Better. Yeah, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, everybody. Nah, I'm I'm a fan. <laughs> Me too. Uh, but yeah, here's the thing. Uh, but like, so what kind of ultimate is it? Just is it this? Is it the setting? Is it the the production value? What what about this kind of? Because I like I said, I like this movie a whole bunch. It's like it's 
I had a lot of fun with it, but I, I'm I'm not I'm not seeing where's it. Well, what here's the problem. Short for you okay, I, here's the ultimate problem is in the writing because as I said before, you know the main character, the Will Stronghold character, that he he that character literally does nothing wrong the entire movie. Like he he's not flawed in any way. Then you have stuff like you know you have the the tough kid with the with the firepower. Um, that kid, the War and Peace. War and Peace. His dad was put away by Will's dad, by the commander, and it's and and there's it's never brought up. Like th- that doesn't come up later. Well, it does a tiny bit. There's like some throwaway stuff, but at the end of the day, I also say this: if your uh, one of your parents is of villain fame, why are we letting you up here with all the other exactly. kids? Exactly. That's a good exactly. Question. Then you have then you have the Kevin Heffernan character, the the guy from Super Troopers playing the bus driver. Hit both. It, it's mentioned that both his parents are superheroes, and he never became a superhero. Correct. So he's a, basically he's the stakes. If yeah. uh, the kid who's the central character, if he doesn't develop powers, he's going to become Heffernan. Yeah, and they point that out. Why isn't it. that? Why? Why is that never brought up again? Oh, it, like why? Well, why does the bus driver not talk? To will about it at all and and i just felt like uh, for me the biggest problem is i never felt any stakes and they're turning people into babies i don't yeah. i don't take fondly to turning people into babies <laughs> one would assume i mean even even uh the incredible we don't take kindly stakes. in these parts to people being turned into babies i don't take kindly to people that don't take me kindly <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like they were going for a G even instead of a PG. It just, it, it was tiresome. It's like Peppa Pig quality stuff here. <laughs> that's that's a that's a sick burn, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that is a sick burn. And and you know, as much as we liked what Kevin McDonald did and Dave Foley did and Jim Rash did. You know, Cloris Leachman is almost completely unused in this movie, and they had her. Like they, she's in the movie, but I couldn't, I, I can't remember anything that she did. She's at. like a nurse for five seconds and has laser eyes. That's about right, it. But that's she has it. X-ray eyes or whatever. Also, oh, that's got, right. Also, you've got Tom Kenny in this movie and his wife, SpongeBob. Yeah. By the way, and, Cloris Leachman and Linda Carter reunited from that uh, Wonder Woman pilot that we watched. Oh man, that would have been great. But most of us watched. <laughs> Oh right, you that's right. I watched that. another episode because that was the you didn't only, see the right one. The only <laughs> I forgot about that. Trust me, I I forgot. You were making that. snappy comments throughout that entire episode. I'm not. I'm trying my best. I'm like I'm skimming through it on YouTube, trying to throw in any sort Poor of thing guy. that I can because I'm just like <laughs> it was the first and only only movie so far that's actually been rated a Joseph Gordon Levitt, which is a Robin that never was. So I never saw it, so I can't really. <laughs> I couldn't rate it. Never too late, man. Go back after we're done recording, man. Nah. Up the <laughs> I am paying for it. I should use it. Well, we've done a lot of soul searching on this episode, and we have to ask ourselves the, one of the most important questions anyone has ever asked anyone in the history of the world, and it's how in the world does Sky High relate to Sylvester Stallone? Mike Mitchell is the director of Sky High. <laughs> Let me start again. (laughs) Mike Mitchell is the director of Sky High, and he's what my father, Charles Drake Kovacs III, would call (laughs) an animation triple threat. Voiceover work, drawing, and he can write. He can write like the wind. Now, my old man, Charles Drake Kovacs III, would also say that he's one of the guys that make things work. He's not a name that makes the tabloids because he's not handsome. But he's a maker and a doer, and he makes the things you like a little bit better. Now, I've never met the man because I don't work in film and television. I'm an insurance adjuster by trade. (laughs) So my life is one filled with quiet desperation and tedium and paperwork. But if there's one thing my father, Charles Drake Kovacs III, taught me, it's that if you do something you love, you don't work a day in your life as something poor people say because they're poor and don't (laughs) understand how money works. It's true. But I know that the former Sean works in film and television and worked on SpongeBob SquarePants Sponge Out of Water. And so he probably worked with Mike Mitchell on that movie. And I'm sure whatever old Sean is doing now is doing something awesome. 
and that everybody on this show wishes they could be more like him, especially Bruce. <laughs> in 1998, Mike Mitchell wasn't a director just yet. He worked in the animation department as an additional story artist on the movie Ants, which is a star which stars a talented creep Woody Allen and black exploitation <laughs> superstar, former NFL running back and stunning African American sex machine Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Ants was an animated movie that came out when every animation studio in America said to themselves, we want to make a movie about bugs because kids love bugs. And for reasons we can't explain, we don't have an animated bug movie. So let's pull the trigger and make that animated bug movie. And they did all of them at the same time. And as it turns out, when all the bug movies come out at the same time, people don't seem to, to, to go to them all and they got to perform. <laughs> And then every animated movie studio in America said, turns out kids don't like bugs, so let's never make a movie about bugs ever again. And they haven't. B movie. It's not Sylvester Stallone's fault. He's just one guy, one super handsome African-American male that drives women crazy. And if there's one thing that my father, Charles Drake Kovacs III, taught me about women, it's nothing because he had absolutely no advice at all when it came to ladies. But I do okay. So there you have it, Agent Piers. This week's Stallone connection is Mike Mitchell. Thank you. I'm Show Kovacs, son of Charles Drake Kovacs III, and I'm an insurance adjuster. I adjust insurance like the wind. Let Thank me, you. Let me ask you a question. Um, does it does it does it bug you that he's the third, and then you're kind of left out of that lineage? No, no. I call myself four. <laughs> It's like not my name, but I just go ahead with it because I just go. You may be surprised to hear this, but my family does it backwards. My great grandfather was Bruce Leslie the fourth. <laughs> what, what 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 are we counting down There's to? There's a shelf life on that name. <laughs> you know, you're getting four generations of Bruce's, then you got to go up with a new name. You're really like, eh, Johnny. <laughs> fine, that's it. There you go. That's how it works. Well, how it works uh, here at Hero Movie Podcast, we have our own patented Robin rating system. Now, we've had reviews in the past say, what in the world are you talking about? That's ridiculous. I don't understand how this works. Well, there's an easy way to remedy that problem. What you do is you go to your computer or your cell phone and go to Facebook.com slash Hero Movie Podcast or just look up Hero Movie Podcast. And, uh, you know, it's right there at the top of the page. That'll give you the breakdown of where all the Robins lie within the Robin rating. Uh, let's start with one Sean Kovacs, because uh, I'm curious. I, I, I don't I don't care about Bruce this week. It's all about Sean this week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's all about Sean. Uh, I, I what like do you this think? movie uh, because it's so weird. Like, they're, they're ne this movie will never exist again. They, the, no one will ever make this movie again. Like, it might be something that you see on cable. Like, especially on Disney Channel, they would make this now as just a like a TV movie. But they this level of budget on something like this, you are never going to see this again. And for that, I like it. And I like how weird it is, even though it is awful. And it really is bad and hard to watch at times, too. Um, so I'm going to give it a very, very low Damien Wayne. All right. Bruce, what do you got? Oh, this is going to be Stephanie Brown territory for me. It's just forgettable. I'm not going to watch it ever again. Probably not very memorable to me in the, in the least. I did not enjoy this. In fact, I wonder if uh, maybe somewhere along the way, this, this movie like slapped my kids or something, because I can't even tell you why I did not enjoy this movie, but I mean, it was, it was painful for me to, to get through this. Did you see? Well, did you see this? Oh, you can't. You couldn't have seen this with your kids because you're away. Yeah, I'm in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nothing like being holed up in the old uh, hotel room by yourself watching Sky High on a Saturday. I'm night. telling you Yo, this. Yo, who though. are you telling, my friend? <laughs> Get your kids to watch it. I'm curious to see what they think. They prefer Zoom. Well, they would. <laughs> I'd love these kids, though. They're great. <laughs> Uh, for me, this is a Tim Drake. I really enjoyed this film. I loved it back in 2005 when I saw it. And, uh, you know, I, it's one of those things of to where I know exactly what this is. It was I knew what it was when I was walking in. I had every intention for it to be the thing that I saw on television and the commercials and all that kind of jazz. It was exactly that PG movie in and out. It's 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 a good time. It's it's entertaining. And, and 
I, I'm not going to sit here and say that it certainly doesn't have his faults. We did talk about all of those, and uh, there are probably maybe even a couple more. But by and large, it is it is a little bit disposable. But, you know, you could do a lot worse for a you know, PG movie on a, on a rainy Saturday with you know, if you got kids or something, you know? You know what we should do? We should make Zoom the third the third thing for the Patreon. I think that's awesome. Zoom it is. Yeah. All right. So let me let me well we'll write them down after the show cuz I got cuz you know I'm not going to remember. Uh so we'll have all of those uh for right. you and all the people that uh, vote on Patreon patreoncom HMP. Uh but yeah, it's uh, for for me it's a good Tim Drake. I I enjoyed this movie. I had a lot of fun and uh you know, not perfect but pretty decent. All right. So that leaves us uh going from one school to another, hmm, huh, hmm. What a what a segue, because uh, we're actually going to be doing. Uh, we're going to go to another school. This time, we're going not only to a sky high. We're going to an academy, an umbrella academy, if you will. Uh, so we're going to be reviewing a couple episodes of Umbre- uh, Umbrella Academy. That's tough for me to say. Uh, that's streaming on Netflix right now, and uh, you know. I've heard good things. I haven't watched anything yet, but I've heard some good stuff. So we'll uh, be checking that out next week. In Are the- we going to review the whole enchilada? I mean, I, sh- I've already seen the whole thing, so it's no me skin too. on me. Okay, well, yeah. I guess I, I guess I have my assignment. Uh, next week we'll be reviewing <laughs> all of the Umbrella Academy, and Adam better get to work toot sweet. In the meantime, Bruce, where can we find more of your work on the internet? You can always go check out Chubby Wizard. There's uh, something fun. To talk about every week there, except for this week, since I'm in Philly, I'm I won't to be say, doing that one. didn't sound like you bought that at all. It's just like <laughs> I don't know. There's great stuff there, I guess. So good, quite a salesman <laughs> that Bruce <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess you, if you feel like it, go to something. You know, come on, dude. I'm out of my element. I'm, I'm really feeling uh, bizarre not having my normal setup for recording. Hey, listen, man, we got to stuff. Are you at least like in a closet or something so you feel a little bit more at home? <laughs> no, that would have been a good idea. You really should right have now. done that. You should have just moved that bank safe out of the way, sat in that closet. <laughs> that would made you feel a little bit better at least. <laughs> uh, Sean, new website up and coming? Uh, yeah, it's called Charles Drake Kovacs III. It is a dedication page to my father, Charles Drake uh, Kovacs III. And uh, it's it, anything you want to know about the man, uh, it, it will be available there at Charles Drake Kovacs the third dot com. It's like the Library of Congress for the uh, the, uh, the Drake Kovacs is over there. It's fantastic. Mm. Mm. Uh, the film find should be coming back next week. I got a lot to talk about the uh, the Oscars that were that weren't things that weren't nominated that should have been nominated and how the Oscars as a whole are a giant awful scam. Uh, so go check that out at the Film Find. Should be dropping sometime probably mid next week. So uh, check that out there as well. And of course, uh, I, I've talked with a couple people about this, and they they they're people are now just discovering Preacher. People are just going through Hulu. They've heard about this new season coming up. They they go wait, what, this is a show, and they're going through it, and then they're going back to the uh, to the podcast. So uh, check out uh, Preacher Podcast if uh, you've been catching up on Preacher because there's a new season coming up, and boy, oh boy, uh, it's gonna be rockets. So uh, we're gonna check that out for you as well. That is it, everybody. Join us next week for the entirety of uh, Umbrella Academy. Until then, for uh, Sean Kovacs, Bruce Leslie, I'm Adam Portis. Stay super, everybody. Bye, Marty and Evie.